What is up guys, welcome to the Big Unbox, where we do that small tech, and today I am back with another big unboxing for you, and today we're back with the all new Sony Xperia 1 to unbox, do a quick review, as always I'll throw up the link in the video description, now this is going to start at 949, if you do look around right now I think there's still a promo running around where you get a free pair of the noise concealing headphones from Sony, which do retail for 350 so that's actually a really good deal. If you can get your hands on those, and those are rather, I think those are actually one of the top of the line uh, noise continuing headphones you can get that retail for 350 bucks, right up there with the Bose one. So that's pretty, I mean, looking at it, it's still gonna be a steep, very expensive phone that probably won't be for everybody, especially with that price point. Go over the specs real quick six gigs of RAM, starts out with 128 gigs of storage. You can obviously, this one actually does have a micro SD, so you can actually increase the storage. Um, Android 9 Pi out of the gate. Let's see what else. 855 Snapdragon, which you'd expect. The only thing I think it looks a little bit interesting is the battery seems a little bit small. 33 milliamp battery, which to me for a 6.5 inch screen seems a little bit small. But we'll check it out and see if it's going to be a hit or miss. This does come with the 4K. This was supposed to be cinema cinema wide display, which is the 21.9, which is really going to be a this is going to be a tall phone to put it lightly. <laughs> I don't even know to put it bluntly. This is going to be a tall phone. So this is the presentation. Not really much to it. I would have expected more for that price point. Kind of generic box. Um, someone saw it. This one's already all dirty and stuff anyway. So the whoever, whoever I got it from, I'm not going to throw them on blast. But the, this is the packaging I got. I'm not real happy with that. But you can see the branding right there. Xperia 1. And on the side, it's going to tell you the Xperia 1. So, you know, clean clean enough box. But I would have expected more for that price point. So let's go and get to the unboxing, guys. And see if it's a hit or miss. As I bust out this janky box. This is, yeah, that's this is pretty frustrating when you get a box like that in the mail. Let's see what we get. So, yeah, this is going to be real tall. Super thin, though. That's really, to me, it's actually nice in the hands. It actually feels really nice to hold. Obviously, you got to kind of climb all the way up. But we'll review that a little bit more when I kind of do the unboxing. But my first impression, I like the way this one feels in the hands, which I wasn't sure about, honestly. It's pretty lightweight. So you got your SIM ejector kit, I'm sure. Put that to the side. Got your power brick, Sony, clean, black, nice presentation. This is actually the first Sony phone I've ever purchased. So I wasn't sure what to expect. You got headphones right there. So that shout out to them for including some headphones. Looks like you got your dongle, so no headphone jack, which is, you know, the trend these days. Not a good trend, but it's a trend. So we'll put that to the side. That's pretty much it. Now here's that black. It looks very, this is a very deep black. I like the way that looks a lot. Let's take this off real quick here. Let's see how this looks. I'm actually curious to see how this, now the actual, I was not, when I saw the package, I'm like, man, this thing janky. So I wasn't expecting a lot, but once I actually got this out, it might be swaying me a little bit just because of the way it feels. It's very tall, which is crazy tall. We'll compare it to some of the other phones. But I'm not going to lie, I like the way it feels. It has a nice hold to it, nice build quality to it. So you can see that glass back, Sony right there. Got your triple shooter camera set up on the back. Just a little protruding, not, you know, it's got a hump. Nothing crazy though, nothing crazy a case won't. It's definitely got this similar finish to like a, you know, a Galaxy, which are kind of the refined edges, curved screen. But I actually like the way this one feels a lot. You can see the screen itself very nicely built. Or kind of has that waterfall effect all the way across the board. Let's see if it has any power here. Turn it on real quick here. Again, I wasn't expecting a lot just because I've never had. I've always heard negative things about phone, you know, Sony phones, and that's really just because I haven't actually had one before. But I've heard negative things about them. Doesn't look like there's a fingerprint sensor. It looks like it's probably on the end screen. I didn't really check that out. I should probably check that out a little bit more on my review. But I don't actually, not sure if there's a fingerprint sensor on the inside or if this is just one of the ones like the Apple phone, which got the face ID. So you can see what there, it is a little bit more, and I, I would rather have this in my opinion, the little notch or the no notch 
and then give you more bezel top and bottom. Where you can see that is giving you some bezel at the top and bottom. It's, it's a little bit heavier than some of the phones, the newer phones, but honestly, it's not too bad. Let me load this up real quick. I'll be right back, guys, and we'll turn it on and take it for a quick test drive and see if it's a hit or a miss. It's kind of taking a little while to load up, so I'll be right back. Hold on. Alright guys, welcome back. So we got the Sony Xperia up and running and I gotta say I'm pretty impressed with this one so far. A little bit shocked how impressed I am and I'll tell you the reasons why. Now I did, I should have done my research a little bit more. The fingerprint sensor is on the side. So shout out to them for providing it on the side and not doing the in-screen fingerprint sensor or even on the back. I'm actually a huge fan of where they put this one and I'll tell you why. Let me show it to you guys. So you got your power button right there. So that's your power button, turn it on and off. Fingerprint sensor is right next to it. You can see right there, it's kind of like a divot little hole and it feels really natural. So it's like right there. There's a little bit of delay. I think it should be faster. Maybe it, maybe they come out with a software update that'll be make it a little faster, but you can see it's gonna work every time. It's more of a natural resting point for your hand as well. To me, that's a big deal because I'm not a huge fan of the ones on the end screen. The S10 Plus, it, to me, it just never works right, so it's a big disappointment. I really like the placement of the S10e, where it's on the side like that, and I think that that's a nice natural resting point, especially for this tall screen. It just feels like a natural resting point, probably for most size hands. You don't have that, you know, you don't have the one on the back either, where you have to kind of crawl up, depending, especially how high this phone is, how tall this phone is. So you're not going to have that issue. It's pretty much more of a natural resting point, which I'm a big fan of. So nice job to Sony for doing that. Now the screen itself is very vibrant. You can tell, you know, Samsung usually makes the best looking screens. This one actually just is right up there with it. You can see how vibrant the colors are. Sony did an excellent job making this screen. And I actually like how tall it is. And in terms of it's you got more bezel on the top and bottom. All right, that's that's one of the downsides if you're not a bezel fan. But I'll take the bezel any day over the notch, and to me even over like the punch hole because it just feels it just looks like a more natural rounded phone all the way across the board. So if you're watching videos like that, you're not gonna have the obstruction of a notch or anything like that. To me, this is just looks like a more like a a better quality phone when you're watching video now. In terms of response time, it seems like it's super responsive. I haven't really checked it out too much yet, but I am impressed with the overall feel of the phone, the look of the phone. I'm a pretty much a big fan of this phone so far, and that's all I can tell you at this point until I do some more research and reviews and check out the camera and all that stuff like that. But you can see it's a very nice looking device. You got one speaker girl at the bottom. They are kind of chintzy right there. I wish they would have done two speakers. Um, there's a speaker girl at the top right there. So you just got a single shooter on the bottom, and then on the top right there's your, your uh, other one. And again, you can see the sides, you got the power, and then you get the fingerprint sensor, volume up and down, it's all on one side. So the other side's very clean, nothing to it. So overall, very nice looking device. Let's check it out with some other top of the line phones right now, just to see compare it, because I'm curious to see how much taller this one's gonna be. So you got the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, big boy right now, look at this. Look how the Sony towers over it. That is crazy. So it's a little bit thicker, but this tone, the Sony just towers over it. You can see the thickness is a big difference too. So in terms of overall width, I should say, not thickness, this one's definitely thinner, but a lot taller. And that's a and the S10 Plus is a big boy phone. This reminds me kind of like a Note where how tall it is, but it actually feels a little bit lighter than a Note as well. So this is the, um, the Apple iPhone XS Max. So you can see how chunky this one is compared to it. But again, look at that tall. This six, look at the, how tall this is compared to the S10. It's a completely different phone dimension wise. Both are quality. This is definitely heavier for sure. Let's see what else we got going. Keep it moving, keep it moving. Uh, LG G8. Let's check it out. So this one's definitely going to be, it's probably about the same in terms of overall width, but you can see this one's definitely taller, that the Sony is definitely taller than that one. Let's see what else we got here. Um, OnePlus 7, this is the regular OnePlus 7. So you can see it's a little bit taller, and the OnePlus 7 is definitely a little bit wider. Nothing, It's nothing crazy though. And then let's check out the OnePlus 
7 Pro, which is probably one of the best phones on the market. Let's check it out. This is a good competition for it. I'm not sure what happened with the camera, but the camera popped up. So you can see right there, it's definitely close. This one's going to be a little bit wider, but you just got a little bit more height. So actually, they're very, both are very tall phones. I would say that the Sony's a little bit easier to hold just because if it's a little bit slimmer. Um, build quality about the same. I'd say weight about the same as well. Maybe just a little bit heavier for the S10. Or I'm sorry, the OnePlus 7 Pro. But overall, both have a, a nice premium build quality to them. So that's pretty much the overview right now. I'm not. I'm gonna say this one to me could has potential to be a hit. It looks like Sony is doing something in the right direction. This may be a slept on slept on phone, but maybe something you guys are worth want something worth checking out. It's definitely not gonna be a phone for everybody. Not every you're not gonna see too many Sony phones at least in the U.S. market. So you might want to separate yourself from everybody else by getting this one. This one's definitely going to be more unique than everybody rocking the iPhone or whatever. Let me know what you guys think about this one in the comment section. Is it a hit? Is it a miss? Hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys next time.